Good afternoon. An early start for us today because we have much to get through in terms of European Counter-Strike. It's going to be a long day. I am joined by Halvor. Dan is recovering from food poisoning, but may join us later if his stomach permits. So fingers crossed. Send him your well wishes at follow DDK. You know, he's trying to basically hypnotize all his, you know, would-be followers. Yeah. Follow DDK. Not just DDK, but follow DDK. Interesting. I mean, Let, you, you got to have your market strategies on point. I suppose if you're you going to make it, right? Yeah. So he's thought this through. Yeah. Could have gone with official DDK. Could have gone with uh, DDK CSGO. The man DDK. That, yeah, that, that too. Dan the man DDK. Mm -hmm. Dan the man DDK. So, a uh, quick reminder of our format. It's a home and away system. Every team plays every, every other team twice. Um, the away team vetoes two maps. The home team picks from the remaining five. Our finals are coming up in Anaheim very soon indeed. Anaheim, California, near the Los Angeles area. Just a short drive away. Or a taxi if you're a taxi man like I am. So you can get tickets from free if you are a student. Not many of those left. Uh, or you can go all the way up to a VIP, should you uh, wish to, up there at $75. Anaheim Convention Center. Anaheim.csgoleague.com is where you can find all the information on those tickets. So make sure you get yourselves down there or up there if you can. So we can have a quick look at the schedule. We've got a lot of European games uh, coming up for you. And I don't remember any of them. We're seeing every map apart from Nuke. Yeah, I think that's right. So, yeah, we're going to see six different maps. To be fair, we do have eight games, so we, we should have a pretty good spread. Or that that's what we can hope for, at least. And luckily, we got it as well. Yeah, so I'm just going to focus on the top four matches. G2 versus Pro, Overpass, Train, Fnatic, Astralis, Dust2, and Train. In fact, I'm just going to focus on the top two. Overpass <laughs> and Train between uh, G2 and Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro, you know, don't always have the best time of things on online matches. Uh, gave us some quite entertaining games yesterday. Yeah, uh, well, at least one entertaining game. I thought I think their their overpass showing versus Godsent wasn't necessarily the the best thing we've seen all year, but that w that was more of the the Virtus Pro we've been well familiar with online. But for the better part of this ECS season, they've actually been doing really well for themselves, uh, considering that there's this an online league and they normally just tend to show up with that Virtus, uh, Virtus Plow mode in, uh, in offline games. Yeah. So uh, in, in that sense, uh, I think they're doing better than what we could have expected, which is weird to say for like a top three team in the world. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's just kind of the thing about their team. Going up against G2 on Overpass, that's going to be the first map, G2. Yeah. I think you might say they first showed their prowess on Overpass um, at the ECS1 finals when they beasted SK on it. I was, I was really excited to see SK and and on overpass and nerd out about their about their CT side didn't have one. Just got completely <laughs> wrecked by G2. Got absolutely ruined. In fact, let's have a look at where G2 are in the leaderboard. They're playing catch up in over the next few days and have somehow only mustered four matches. While some players, some teams rather, are on 14. So, in that sense, there's not much, not too much to talk about because the leaderboards are so skewed. But that's where they are at the moment. Doesn't mean much. We'll see where they will be after today's matches. Yeah, so it's four games. So just if they win all four maps today, already you know they're going to be up where, where Dignitas are. What is interesting, though, is that the top five teams are all tied at the moment. But yeah. uh, FaZe versus Pro and Envy will have two games in hand currently over Fnatic, Gods, and Dignitas. So, um, sorry, yeah, well, yeah, Dignitas as well. So so there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, we don't really know much as to who's going to qualify right now. It could it could go between those top six teams and G2. <laughs> it, could, it could be anyone's with the 18 games in total for every team to play. So, And if you're yeah. G2 right now, you you have to be... Well, the, the, being in this kind of situation, obviously it's, it's, it could be stressful to, having, uh, or to have to play that many games in that short of amount of time, but you also know what you have to aim for yeah. to, uh, to your full extent. You know that you know, we... we have to win at least you know five of these games and that's going to put us into this and this kind of situation and that you know either it's going to have us clear for the finals or maybe not they're going to have everything laid out for them so they don't have to have any sort of worries they know that it's all going to be on themselves and how they perform in these remaining games with an ip actually also on eight all of eight games at the moment um i mean they let's not count them out either basically <laughs> the leaderboard doesn't tell us anything because almost anyone yeah. can qualify for the land at this point. So yeah, and it's like I said, five. I, yeah, top five is all on twenty-one points. Yeah. So it <laughs> doesn't really like for the teams that have actually played a ton of games as well. It doesn't really say anything there because they're all tied. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. there we go. 
It's, it's going to be a, an interesting couple of last days, though, um, of the of the online season, though, for sure. It's going to be a lot of well, every every game that's left is going to be a high impact game, yeah. which is different from obviously the start of the the start of the season where everyone is. If you're off to an zero and two start, it doesn't really matter that much. But if you go zero and two in at this stage of the the tournament, then that could be the end of your playoff hopes. Yep, so that's going to there's going to be eight European games today and ten European games tomorrow. The, the final two North American games are coming later today, but they are inconsequential, at least to the top of the uh, leaderboard, as all the teams have now made it. CLG, uh, not CLG, um, Cloud9 and SK are tied at the top, and then you have um, Optic and Immortals. I want to yeah, say, but correct. in other in other order, Optic came fourth because they got ruined by CLG on yeah, train. Yeah, on train <laughs> of all maps. Yeah, that was. Very peculiar indeed, mm. but uh, there, there we go. So they will probably end up playing first seed from Europe, which uh, we have no idea. Again, with all five teams tied at the top at the moment. One thing we can say: it's going to be a good team, for sure. Because mm. anyone who has, well, I don't, well, I don't think anyone's out of it at this point either, which is also kind of funny because you have so skewed uh, differences in how many matches there are played. Yeah, but. None of the teams in in that EU league or EU part of it is is a bad team, <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's yeah, it's going to be it's going to, yeah, that's quite a disparity and something we we were talking about yesterday with North American teams is that <clears throat> there's more there's more professional level support in terms of organizations for teams in North America than there are professional level teams. Yeah. Um so if you have a large league you're always going to have a lot more weakness in that league than you are going to have in Europe for example. Um I think complexity were 3 for 15. Yeah, in, that sounds about right. In the league and um TSM were 4 for 14. Yeah. So they uh, were definitely, both teams were cannon fodder and they will have to uh, fight in the relegation area for next year's league, which will be interesting. 2017 ECS, hopefully it goes from strength to strength. Our, stu our studios changed quite a lot in that time as well. We started off with the big uh, metal desk, but didn't really feel like that was us <laughs> so, <laughs> so much. Thing. So yeah, so we got rid of that. I quite like it now. We've got the desks around the table with the touchscreen built into that. Yeah. So uh People like Vendetta, like Anko, can get over there and start squiggling around, which is always fun. Yeah, Inner, inner Painter What's gets this, this uh, gets full today? release. Is it being funny today? Yeah, it's not. Doesn't like me today. It's <laughs> like it's like I feel like I'm wearing a bra sometimes because the way you got to like put it over your shoulder, right? Oh it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, I, I don't know. It's like having a leash a lot of the times, especially because it, like it it kind of just sticks to you. Like it gets caught in the chair or mm. something like that, and then you sit, drag around, and all of a sudden your headset comes off, flies off. Would you like to it's turn your phone on silent, Vendetta? I, I know. I'm, Is that a Pokemon notification? It's a Pokemon notification. <laughs> well, that's that's new. I haven't seen a Pokemon notification on the stream before, so. Uh, well, they haven't either. But now you have. Yeah. Exclusive have. club. Indeed. Apparently, the knife round is live. Let's watch it because I'm bored. Let's look at the knife rounds. Oh. That it producer is lying to me, apparently. <laughs> it's, it's, like it's, it's like it's live, but it's not actually live. So he's just, he's just one trolling of those me. Always, always trolling me. It's been a while since producer Reese has blown something up, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was a few studios ago where we were just live on stream and we had an explosion. In, back we in Soho, stream. wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. We had uh, a studio above a floor of uh, two floors of, of fashion chicks. That wasn't that wasn't a bad situation, that's for sure. It's definitely not the worst office I've been to. Yeah. We actually we actually went out with a bunch of them once and uh, some of them got wrecked. I had to send some home in a taxi because they were thrown <laughs> up everywhere and the security wanted to throw them out of the, of the club. Jesus. That oh. was interesting. Drinking with esports people. Yeah. It's not Especially easy. Those Twitch cre credit cards, man, they're dangerous. Oh, they're lethal. I mean, anyone who's ran into, well, anyone from Twitch knows that. Yeah. Esports has basically retired me from drinking. Well, I'm just see, done. Th that's a common, th that's a common line, amongst people who work in esports. Never true though. I oh, know it's true for me. Okay. It's true for me. When and you go, I'm, when you I'm, go I'm, to the extreme limits that Counter Strike <laughs> casters do with drinking. I'm just gonna say that Matt has said that multiple times. Henry has said that multiple times. I'm not sure how true it is. We'll see. We'll see how long you're oh, able to, to hold it. Uh, yeah, I've heard Matt has retired. No, I'm I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> It's always all over for me. Uh, there's always a chance that I come back. I'm retired from the alcohol. Oh. I'll let you cast my friend. Oh, uh, it's over. Oh, James. never mind. There's me trying to get the break. <laughs> now, but G2 winning the knife, uh, which is a tiny bit worrying for Virtus Pro. We didn't get to see too much of their T side yesterday because they had a pretty shaky CT side, but normally their T side isn't 
their strongest suit on overpass either. And we talked about this yesterday, the fact that for the better part of it, VP haven't really tried to, to play overpass all that much as of late. So this is, might be one of their things. Well, this is G2's map pick, but the fact that Virtus Pro lets it go through might be a bit of a bit of a warm up for, for the major uh, coming up or the EZS finals coming up as well. G2 going for the same TT pistol that we saw from Virtus Pro yesterday on overpass. It's going to put the numbers game over towards B, but Neo has left them in a situation where Virtus Pro, they have a, the opportunities to rotate towards the A site here, but they're going the long way, literally. So will they get there in time? Two-man rotation coming in for G2 with their man advantage. Some grenades being deployed. Snacks still lurking, trying to choke off any rotation. But now they're two men down. RPK over towards the truck. Not going to let this bomb go down. Nothing but heads being popped here by G2. Very solid pissed around from them. Yeah, and uh, the aggression yesterday, what we saw with, well, <laughs> uh, Godsend and Virtus Pro in that pissed around is that everything turned into just a complete brawl in the middle of nowhere. In this scenario, Virtus Pro had such a passive positioning that only Neo gets caught out, but they're playing so passively with the four others that they're not really in a position to actually pounce off of the fact that G2 are out of, out of position on A. So you see the entire rotation coming through the entire map back into A for G2 before VPI has actually a shot at getting towards that A bomb site. First is Proton Force by moving the T's through connector. Always One a smoke on Neo. Might might land for um, for Optimus Prime to uh, to try to get blocked that off so they can get an easy bomb plant. I have two pop flashes coming in from Pasha and, uh, and Taz to just allow them to get up on that site. Shoxi already roaming around. It's gonna get found out by Snacks, but is immediately traded by Scream. All right, now a lot of aggressive movement coming out from G2, and they're just finding Virtus Pro players right and left, and well, taking the fight to them. It's the opportunity for Virtus Pro to win this. UMP picks up onto Taz, and they can rotate. Indeed, the bomb's rotating towards B. Bomb site Barley trying to get there as well. And Taz has managed to pick up a UMP as well in this. So, honestly, I, I'd say that, well, the weaponry is better for, for Virtus Pro. So far, so good. Taz heavily tagged. Can't make it around the corner. Scream with a patient burst at distance with the MP9. But he's on 30 HP versus Barley. Not sure what one bullet of damage to the chest does with uh, Tech 9, but we might find out soon enough. Barley just walking into the angle though, and that will allow Scream to get the kill. Just about hanging on for G2. Just about. I mean, luckily for them, Scream was the one to pick up uh, to pick up uh, the majority of frags, so he's gonna obviously rack up quite a bit of cash. But it's gonna require some effort to actually replenish here. See, after they buy up, and yeah, exactly. The buy coming in for VP, having a pretty successful uh, run at it. Getting a bomb plant down, killing four members. They're just going to take their chances here. Actually going to have Neo drop an AK over to Snacks. Is Snacks actually going to throw that to someone else? No, he's going to pick it up. But yeah, there we go. Finally buys armor. Now we're going to look to see whether or not, well, how VP are going to run this. If they're actually going to send their AKs first to try to find a pick. We did see Immortals do something similar yesterday, but they just ended up throwing that away and leaving bolts all the way alone towards that V-bomb set of Mirage with an AK. With all his teammates dead. And again, aggression coming out from G2. Didn't really work out in that last round. Actually caused them way more, way more harm than it should have. Scream will hear the footsteps. I can tell his teammates that some people are going towards A and A mate, that might, that might that position more G2 players towards A. We've got Smith having a look around the toilet, seeing what's going on. And Scream now coming in for a flank. He's got to be careful though, because if there is a rotation, there's a second player towards B uh, in Bali, and there's a chance he could start moving towards the A position. Normally, you see just a one lurker towards the B bomb site. I do wonder if Scream will go for a kill straight away. Should hear Bali strafing. There we go, the information play. And there's the first kill. Does he expect second play though? Oh, not going to check properly. That's going to be a trade. Pash is running under a grenade in his hand. He'll get taken down. Three versus three. Shock trying to avoid the flashback, but he can't do it. Gets a spray in the right place, but Snack still gets a kill. And Body all this time has been standing here with one HP. I I like this from VP though. The fact that they split up the AKs and has Taz or have Taz and Bialy as their own little duo. Ooh, did not see the head of Body. It's a big kill, but at night. It's execution style. Down to a one versus two RPK with 40 HP. Worst situation that Scream was in, you would argue. 
And here by the turn back, Snax is streaming in for help. He's got an AK as well. Will he go for the picnic or double peek here? But Neo will do it on his own. That is a disgusting shot of the Deagle. Jesus. That's brutal. Manages to pick up the AK as well. But I like that from VP. They split up, and uh, you know, a as it turns out, because it screams aggression, once again, it doesn't really work out because Bialy, who gets caught out, he only has a Tech 9 in that kind of a situation. Scream obviously thinks he's just playing the same role that Neo did in that first uh, pistol round, where he's just a uh, sole decoy towards that B bomb site to prevent any sort of aggression coming out from, from the B bomb site. Gets caught out by Taz, opens up a lot of space. MVP still, you know, because they have that uh, AK on snacks over towards long, they still have a lot of firepower to actually push forward where uh, otherwise, or other, yeah, other places on the map as well. RPK and Body have gone for a two-man push towards short, being cleared it out. And now they've got shocks in tow. He smoked off Monster, and this push may continue from G2. But will they go through towards T-Spawn or into Connector? Mm. Smith moving back from the long position. Minute 13. Still lots of time for Virtus Pro to play with. I like that offhand goal with a 5-7. Haven't seen that one before. I'm not sure if VP has an idea that the that G2 have actually bought up. I don't think anyone from G2 has actually shot something yet with a actual weapon. So VP might not be expecting this buy to come in from, from G2. Oh, the timing. Unbelievable. That's horrible for Smith. But he's in trouble because Pasha. we've got Pasha on the flank and that might be the only kill Smiths gets here because Pasha's turning around. There goes Scream and there goes Smiths as well. Open a bomb site. And now G2 are limited to the rotation, the three man rotation through Connector. And Barley's on the flank as well, but he won't be able to see them from his angle. But maybe he can come in and make a save for his side. Neo yeah, moving up towards the long position. Should hear Shocks coming in, but Shocks will get the kill regardless. No one in position to do anything about it, but there's Bailey from the back. And now things get even more difficult for G2. RPK picks up the AWP, but they don't, they don't really have a position to, to save from. They have to, well, choose to push forward or push back. In fact, bailey has gone towards long now, so maybe there is a channel for them to escape. Yeah. Actually, ends up being an okay situation for G2 to save in, because initially they didn't really have anything worthwhile saving. They had a FAMAS and two 5.7s. Like, sure, you can you can argue the fact that holding onto the armor and uh, the couple of nades they have would have been nice, but it's not not really what you want in a situation where you force buy into. But the fact that they managed to pick up that op and to pick up an AK on shocks as well actually makes it worthwhile. And that could have gone horribly wrong, especially yeah with Biali being on that flank. If he kind of just sat still and the rest of the team actually decided to push towards him, so they would. You know, or the show they could set up that sandwich situation. I think that would have been more beneficial for Virtus Pro. But again, their economy wasn't necessarily stable by any means leading up to this. So they just want to play it as safe as possible. Let's see if they can break into the B bomb side. That seems to be the intention. Bomb left in a passive position. Barley just coming in for the peaks. Got to be careful towards the barrel spot. There's Body. Got a teammate coming in on the side as well. That's Pasha, but he goes down to the pistol. Trades coming in from Bayali, and he will indeed get traded back from Smith. Three versus three. They've got opportunities to smoke off these angles. Smoke down to stop uh, Smith from the graffiti angle for now. But Shox may just be waiting for the plant. Is he going to peek? There's no cover. Oh, yes, there is. Neo. Smith's come jumping in. No frag for him, though. He's got Scream on the high ground, but he's only got a USP. And he will be dispatched of as well. So G2 finally get uh, almost broken, actually. They've still got some money. And indeed, they're going for the buy. They're going to be limited on utility, but uh, they do not want to drop any more rounds to Versus Pro. Yeah. Well, they have shown that they're they're willing to go aggressive, at least in the uh, anti-eco rounds. And given how they have not that much uh, utility, I think that that's going to have to be the only option as well. They're going to have to get into the face of VP, not sit back and allow them to, to actually execute towards the bomb site because they're, they're going to have no way of actually holding that off. Here we go. Smiths with the aggressive push actually finds two frags right away. Well, both of the guys on that A long side do get traded eventually, but it's a lot of damage done. And given, again, the fact that they have so little utility, that's going to almost be favorable. Even though in a situation like this, you'd almost favor the, the terrorist in any kind of situation. But given where G2 are at, this is actually pretty decent for them. So much time on the clock versus Pro. Both teams, everyone is spread out. No one is uh, in a trade situation at the moment. So these frags could be crucial. RPK in an important position for his team. He's got Pasha heading his way. Pasha with two kills, unanswered kills already so far. Oh, Snacks ready for shocks behind the barrel. That is a big frag. And there goes Body as well. So this RPK, last man standing. Got some sound cues to play with. 
bomb. Which way will it head? Is he? No, he's not going to hear. He's not going to be able to hear Snacks with the bomb, is he? No. But uh, I, I did wonder if Snacks was maybe heading towards Connector, but the high ground, the long area, maybe the safest route. Oh, the way. Well, this is working out perfectly for Virtus Pro. Obviously, RPK is thinking that they've committed to B push because Bialy runs over towards B. Well, Pasha's is going to be in perfect position to just take out RPK unaware. Straight in ahead. Fourth round for Virtus Pro. The fourth buy from G2. Won't work out. They'll be on $3,000. They uh, have lost four rounds in a row. So they'll be back on the big buy at maximum loss bonus after this one, unless something terrible happens. Yeah. Buying a couple of team kills, they should be all right. But I, I still like the idea from, from D2 of just realizing and recognizing what kind of situation they find themselves in, going for the aggressive push. That's kind of giving themselves the best opportunity to win the round. That's a nice shot from, from Neo. So far, so good. Hopefully this one is a, qu is a quick one. And we can move on. Taz deployed a Ali Molotov in the, uh, in the, in the connector position. Now Virtus Pro just trying to find out. Three people still dangerous for, for G2. RPK tagged through that angle. I st I'm still yet to kill someone through that angle. I think it's even all of Meister get a couple of frags through there. Doesn't really work out in it <laughs> most of the time. I think people have become aware. Yeah. We saw some nice, um, I think it was Snacks go, going for some wallbangs from CT spawn yeah, from Optimus, yesterday. Yeah. I would like to see more of that later on. Wouldn't be too surprised if that was the case. You can see he's already wielding the AWP here on the T side. Uh, yeah, now speaking of AWPs, um, actually, I, don't, I don't know what Bali was carrying. Probably not the AWP. So we'll see if RPK is able to rescue whatever gun is outside Monster. And now Virtus Pro running the clock down against three. 30 seconds might be enough time to eliminate three players. No one checking long low. Where's the crossfire at? Again, three people can still be dangerous. Now RPK with three HP can entirely go for this. It yeah, has it, to. nothing to lose really in this kind of a situation. But obviously, he's gonna have to have some pretty hit some pretty sick shots if this is gonna work out. And VP smartly setting up in a crossfire, and that's the end. Yeah, more painful than it needed to be. Uh, yeah, no, definitely for for Virtus Pro, they could have avoided some uh, some hurt there if they actually just cleared out corners. And it looks like they were setting up for it initially, doing it in a good way, using their Molotovs even though they're two men up, uh, and so on going into the bomb site. But double ops coming out for the G2 side. Shocks and Smith. Smith doesn't have a forward position. Maybe he was deploying a smoke grenade. No, he's got his full grenade. So just a bad spawn. He'll be forced to take a uh, more passive angle and the forward angles we normally see. Shocks over towards B for the time being with his AWP. And a very slow approach from Virtus Pro. They know G2 are on the maximum buy, so they are taking a very passive start in all directions. Bali, not even outside Monster. In super passive positions, Virtus Pro. But at some point, they're going to need to start moving through the map. I'm not sure how much they've been able to identify in terms of the buy of G2. Uh, and again, Pretty much what VP were setting up for and waiting for, the aggression coming from G2. With Bialy taking that passive position, not sure if he actually spotted the fact that Shox had an AWP and that's why he backed off, but this is giving a lot of space for G2 to actually rotate people around. You can already see that Shox is moving over towards that A bomb set because they have body in such a forward position. Yeah, neither AWP has taken a shot yet. So, could be a nasty surprise. Once they see Shox with an AWP, they have to assume that Smith has got one as well. 40 seconds left, so Virtus Pro playing into oh. the unknown, but look at Body's position. Yeah. That could be a problem. He's got unsilenced M4 though, so uh, that's something. Oh, t the timing. Oh, it's a blind spot, but how many? Oh, he played the information game as well, but they turned around again. So that's going to speed things up for Virtus Pro. 20 seconds remain, and there's only one person on the B-bomb site now. That's RPK, he's in the water area, on fire as well. Got support finally coming in from CT spawn. There's shocks of one kill and scream. So it's working out for G2 so far. Four versus two. There's another trade, Neo going down, leaving Pasha alone on the flank. And it may be all too late for Pasha. Yeah, you can't really walk at this point, Pasha. You you kind of have to commit. Yeah, it's a tad too late. Not going to work out. I don't, yeah, the bomb was planted actually open for him. Obviously covered by smoke. We'll find Smith. So that's an AWP actually out of the hands of G2, which is pretty big in the, the current situation they find themselves in. Also, 
at the brink of being reset as well if they lose this one. It's going to be pretty, pretty bad times for, for G2. Yep, that's awkward. Losing the second orb at the last second. Didn't have the money to hunt for the kill. Especially with Versus Pro winning five rounds in a row. Not a big deal. Although this is a, an important round. Most people have run out of money on the Polish side. So maybe their uh, run of rounds has come to an end. Very forward positioning from G2 across the map. Shocks on his own around the toilet. Smiths and Scream, two man set up towards along. RPK and Body playing close to Monster at the moment. They can support each other if required. Yeah, I, I like actually this double setup towards Monster. Like, it has an inherent risk in it, obviously, because you leave short very weak and uh, it's it's tough to, to actually do anything with it if VP do a proper execution, but you can basically shut down that entire monster area pretty easily Ooh. if you do it together, but yeah. Through the corner of the wooden panel. Our oh, body's got a lot to do there. Low health, the bomb sliding in his favor. Three kills for body, that's massive! That is monstrous for his side. Still a man advantage, two man flank coming in from G2. And the bomb sliding down will buy them some extra time. Shock's getting naded, but just needs to hold his angle and allow his teammates to come in from the back. They're, they don't seem expected too much. Actually, here comes Snacks. Oh, Lick's looking away at the wrong time. He had his job to do, looked away. That's brutal timing for him. Pasha coming in on the flank once again. Didn't know where he is, though. He's a, he hears a smoke go down. And he's forced to run for it. Doesn't have his gun out, though. And Scream will take him down. Four to five. And again, that, the money's running low for versus Pro now. Yeah. And they do get a bomb plant though, so and they have. Um, I think it's Pasha who's on 9k. This but is huge from Body. Should be able to buy it. Huge. But th that's two more kills than he should be allowed to get. The first one, okay. They they might not be expecting uh, one guy to play far down towards Monster, but VP definitely should uh, shouldn't have too much of an issue of actually trading Body out there in that situation, especially with how much damage the first uh, VP player does to him, sends him down to 18 HP. Nice pop flash there from Scream. Not going to peek, not going to face the angle though. So Versus Pro have uh, still pulled out a quite reasonable buy here. Yeah, a little, little bit um, lackluster in, in utility and Neo obviously on that scout. But it's going to be enough to, to set up for an execute because they have three smokes, they have two Molotovs. And uh, an A hit looks imminent. If they can even get that far though. Oh, the shadows again. So unfavorable to the T's in many areas around both sides of these toilets. Neo holding an angle now. There comes a flash from Scream. He's going to have a look. But Neo's only got a scout, so they could go for a two-man peek here. But his teammate's still, still going to hold the angle behind, just in case. Neo actually gets Smiths instead. <laughs> That's crazy. A scream of one HP manages to escape for the time being. 50 seconds on the clock. Only two players for Versus Pro, and they need to retrieve the bomb left in an exposed position. And even worse, not really that much utility to work with anymore. Went from having three smokes to, to only having one, so they're not going to be able to cover off a lot of big areas whenever they want to go towards the site. Question is if they might try to one out. Well, saving is not really an option either, given out how they, they emptied out their bank as well. Body has the information here. Here's the players running up connector. So he can raise it up to his teammates. Rotation's coming in from RPK, and he needs to come fast because Scream's only got one HP. Shark's missing the first shot. Flash is coming, and that'll slow things down. But how do you versus Pro plant the bomb? Now they're at 10 seconds. It's still a two versus four. Shocks and Body getting the last two kills almost in unison. And the score is tied up. Money running yet lower for Virtus Pro. This might have to be an eco for them. Yeah, I think they're going to have to bite the bullet in this case. Not really much else they can do. And they still have you know, plenty of time to actually make this into a pretty decent T half. And I think even with that, even with the eco, it's not going to be like G2 has the, the grandest of opportunities to really bolster up their economy given how expensive their equipment is. Taz, okay. Just burning, burning away half his life before taking a grenade to the face. It's definitely not advisable, and RPK is going to follow that up on snacks. And well, there's not too much to be expected out of VP on this kind of round. No Kevlar of any sort. We wanted to set up for a B execute with a lot of smokes to try to get a bomb plant down, but with two players already down, that's going to be really tough to do. You can already see that Neo's straddling away from that B bomb site. He's going to try to find a different venue here. Nice. It can buy this time there. No need to push beyond this position. Full team versus two. Curious if you actually saw the fact that he dropped the bomb as well. He should have. Yeah. Well, 
And I can just wait. Neo has to go to them, otherwise he doesn't get his loss bonus. So I can just sit around and wait for him to serve himself up on a plate. And I don't know where Neo is. Delayed timing to try and avoid the spray. <laughs> but there's yet more spray. Unfortunately for him, he's running into three CTs. <laughs> there we go. That's a gauntlet. I think there was a knife attempt there as well. But there we go. Six to five. G2 after after a not great start. It was 5-2 at some point, And now they've made it 5-6 in their favor. And they've got good money in the bank now. So let's see what Virtus Pro can do to clear that out. Virtus Pro come in for the buy. But again, if they lose this, they're straight back to Eco Town. So this is an important round for them as well. Mm. Pasha on the AWP. Seen a lot yeah. of it from Snacks recently and by Oli, but. That's just like a musical chair kind of thing that off on, on Virtus Pro. Musical chair orp is awesome. Yeah. I love that. Especially actually when you have quite a few players on that team who can actually use it. It's like it, when it's musical chairs and not hot potato, in the sense like nobody yeah. wants it, but. Yeah. It seems like everybody's comfortable actually picking it up to it was, a certain extent. It was really fun to see Neo um, with the AWP. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Again, G2 go for their push through Monster. And they'll see that absolutely no one is there. Um, I don't think they're at risk of too many sun cues from that position. But again, if they're going to rotate through T spawn, they need to do it a lot faster if they're going to support their teammates versus Pro. Actually, that, that said, versus Pro have gone for a lot of late pushes around the 40 second mark. Yeah. Smith's in a one and done spot, but he won't get one. And again, that just raises the urgency now. Ooh, Scream, Scream is in trouble as well. Can he escape this position? Doesn't have support from his teammates. The Molotov doing great work. They've got to back up before he kills himself. Shock's delivering on the site at the same time. And there's still a man advantage for the CTs. Although RPK is miles away. He's still in connector. That body will get the last two kills. It's great that you have such a reliable team to hold things down <laughs> when you've got two guys with some longest rotation EU. Yeah. I and mean, luckily for them, it kind of worked out in the in a way that well, as you said, Virtus Pro is so slow to actually set up for their execute because obviously they they want to feel comfortable with what they're doing, so they want to get some sort of map control before they commit to their A hits. But the aggression from G2, I'm I'm actually somewhat surprised yeah. that we didn't see uh, anyone from Virtus Pro being uh, being sat back towards that B bomb set because it's typical. Like regardless of what team you see uh, see playing uh, T side overpass, they're always going to put one guy towards B to just be the observer in that sense to, to have an eye on that uh, area but this is uh that's the second time g2 have actually gotten out of uh, the entire b area to clear out monster and get a ton of information for the rest of the side that's so spray with a half by neo with the scout just talking about him sniping oh i like this angle now Ooh, this is interesting. Oh, Smith's not ready for that. The jump as well. He must have been holding the angle for the low ground, but he's going to get ruined by that. I like that's a really nice boost. Odd, but so you're hidden by the flower bed. That's really cool from Versus Pro. Realize, oh, this is unnecessarily aggressive from Shocks. He does have. Well, he didn't didn't really actually have anyone covering his angle either. But he's going to get away with it. Finds two picks. Well. It's not working out for Virtus Pro. They yeah. have one smoke left, and it's going to be really tough to get any closer to the bomb site. RPK, very patient, tapping to finish things off. Good stuff. Back on the buy now, Virtus Pro. It's their turn to uh, enjoy a maximum loss bonus. Yeah, and uh, now they have to make the decision whether or not they actually want to speed up their tempo to uh, on their default, uh, defaults, or if they just want to slow things down even more to see if there's more aggression coming out from G2. And that's a that's a tough uh, decision to actually make in this kind of a situation. They're actually gonna they're just finally gonna put someone to, uh, towards that V bomb set though at least. So that's a start. But Taz is pretty much alone here and is already taking up to 44 HP, having to run through that Molotov. Yeah, he's got Snacks holding an angle on Connector though, which is always important when you're alone towards Short B. And here comes the push again. Barley's in trouble there because he's got the bombs. So if he goes down here, and he will, that is a huge problem for Virtus Pro. That kind of thwarts their plans. Haven't moved much just yet, and it will be important that Taz now has that Short B position. Snacks caught with, a net with his knife out. And uh, that's a very unexpected position in fairness. Neo coming in as well, but this is falling apart for Virtus Pro. Yeah. The, the worrying thing is that it's the same thing. G2 pushing out on that B-bomb side, just finding so much success each and every time, because obviously with VP not having had any people towards uh, B, they haven't known where the aggression has come from, if it's come through short and uh, the side uh, side tunnels there, or if it's gone through Monster. So Taz 
basically having a 50-50 shot at finding someone pushing aggressively. This has descended into madness. Bodies in T-spawn. There are two smokes down <laughs> and three people playing around the smokes. This is crazy. You don't see an overpass round like this very often. You really don't. It seems like more and more uh, CT sides are taking a shine to actually playing that B bomb side very aggressive. Seeing it more and more. Well, not a lot Pasha can do in this kind of situation. And it seems like G2 are not necessarily super keen on hunting either. I just want to shut off that entire area so there's no way Pasha can actually get to a bomb. And if he wants to save that AK, then it seems like G2 are okay with that for now. Yeah, he'll have 3,900. Um after the next round. Anyway, so we can still buy his AK and flashbang. Rest of his team buying rest of the utility. RPK sitting on sixteen thousand dollars for the last round. Not bad. Oh yeah, it's the last round of course. Well, there we go. Rest of his team can buy stuff up. Pretty impressive comeback here from G2 and I like the fact that they've been they have had a consistent theme throughout their CT side and that's been aggression. And uh, it's it's been awkward for Virtus Pro to handle even the eco rounds that we saw coming out from uh, uh, from uh, G2. Even though they lost quite a few members, they they did catch Ooh. a few players from VP off guard. Shocks, please, going back to the well, of course. Got his teammate running ahead while he holds the angle. But again, like this is creating so much space. Okay, Shocks kind of just. Has to ruining, something, though. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was the thing. Chucks is just kind of ruining all of the hard work that Body's done by sneaking past there, by being the elephant in the room. But again, Body's going to lose the bomb again. Oh, but Taz can, he could get a 2k here if he is smart. Oh, oh. man, RPK, the timing is unreal. This is a brutal way. <laughs> To lose a round, they're getting smoked off in T-spawn. They're smoked <laughs> off in T-spawn. We've seen this. We've seen this before. <laughs> we've seen this before. We have. That is. Which is de definitely not something I was expecting before the game started to say. That is bananas. I mean, no one is on A. Scream's probably holding the the back uh, from from the B bomb site. Pasha's still in long. Yeah. He's miles away. He's <laughs> just walking around. 30 seconds left. Bomb still in T-spawn. Pasha's already cleared oh, out he's, he's going for the fake. He's throwing a flash <laughs> towards long. He's selling the fake, guys. Optimistic. The fake is being sold. I don't think anyone's in earshot of that flashbang. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been hilarious to see a five-man rotation coming out from G2 at that mm. point. Well, he's already been spotted, so this round is over. That is quite a round from G2. Even Jewel Elite is coming out. So was that... Five rounds in total. We saw them doing that. Four rounds. They pushed aggressively in total. I don't. I don't recall. But it was a fair few rounds. That's a, that's a lot of rounds to they, push to push B. A ton of rounds, and it's. We said it after the second time that well, VP. They they kind of need to realize that they have to do something differently, and they were never able to actually see the guys coming through monsters. Bialy was always always there after the fact, after they've gotten through. And in that situation, in the very last round, he actually spots Shocks as well. So he should have been able to release some some information to Taz as well. But I mean, that, that might be a hard counter to the way Virtus Pro used their Lurker towards the B bomb site. Anyway, yeah. you've got Pasha towards the balloon area, going to get taken down. And G2 maybe going for a, a fast play towards Long. Snacks is in there for the flank, though, and he's got the range for it as well. But they're moving into toilets just out of range. Neo's got his opportunity now. Three men, they don't want to line up one by one, but they're getting surrounded by Virtus Pro players. Another pop. Shocks has a lot to do, and he is in the middle of nowhere, which is to his strength if he can open the door without being heard. Yeah, I don't think Taz is going to have heard that, but he does seem to have an idea. <laughs> well, there we go. There it is. Virtus Pro win the round that they needed. Although I think it's going to be they're going to be hard pressed to have the success of B pushes that uh, G2 did. So I do wonder what the, what is up their sleeve once the buy rounds come in. But for now, it's about the anti ecos. G2 have not bought anything just yet. Let's see. We've got second nines. Okay, they've gone for the fourth buy. In what we saw yesterday from Virtus Pro wasn't necessarily the poor CD play in the sense that they they were doing a lot of mistakes. It was more them not hitting hitting shots as well as Godsent were doing in that situation. So. You know, they have the the foundation for a solid CT side here, which is uh, it's just, it is encouraging. Four players on long. The range isn't going to work out in favor of Virtus Pro. 
Although they have tagged the players up, and now they've got a nice crossfire. Ash was patient play with the Famas, doing good work. But now we're in down to two versus two. We've got a scout and an MP9. The MP9's gonna have to get put in great work here. Nice spray running out bullets, so there's a headshot. Now these are very dangerous waters indeed. Shock's going for the fake. Neo non believer though. We'll see if he commits this time. There it is. Close range tech nine. The jumping Neo gets headshot immediately. Shocks is just too good. He's how does he find that angle? I'm with the first shot. I, I don't know. Shoxy. He's so good. It's crazy. <laughs> he is. But then that's like that's something in theory that shouldn't work for you. You take well, weapons that are not necessarily great at long range up against a team that has bought rifles and you're going to the spot on the map where you have the longest distance between you and your opponent. And it still works out for D2 somehow. It should not be possible. First throw, four spying straight back. Deagle, so far so good. Smith goes down, pop flashes as well. Taz with a CZ. Still fighting in this area. Eventually, they'll lose one player. But the damage has been done. Four versus three. Taz getting some more tagging in. Snacks on the flank. Now this is getting very tricky for G2. The fact that he's gotten past Sharks unnoticed. Oh, or has lovely. He? Maybe just knowing the habits of Virtus Pro. Very good check there. Or they knew where, they, where a hole might have been, perhaps. Very possible. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have anybody towards toilets, so... Assumes, assume there is a flank. And then deal with it. Neo with P250. There is a CZ at his feet, but uh, if he picks it up, then the gun that falls on the floor will give his position away. And he might have to reload as well. So, better to keep his uh, pistol out. To no avail, though, versus the MAC-10 of shocks. The way he holds the MAC-10, I thought it was actually a knife. <laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> hell's going on? I'm so confused. Anyway, Bali with the uh, CZ. Still works to be done. 12 dangerous bullets in that. He's expecting G2 to go aggressive here. So holding himself off, and he can hope to get maybe one frag here in this kind of a situation, but actually having a successful restake is going to be more or less impossible. Just going to find shocks and a MAC-10. So that's going to give an opportunity to actually get some money here if he can find a kill with this. Oh, oh no! They're both tagged now, they're both tagged. Oh, PK, you can't peek. <laughs> oh man, there's no deadly grenade. Scream just holding the angle for double peek. That was weird. Because I saw, I saw the health on Scream. He had the AK and he was heavily tagged and the RPK had the MAC-10. So yeah. you, I ideally want RPK with the AK since he has more health at the range. But there we go. 12 to 6. G2 retain. Virtus Pro on a hard eco now. Triple MAC-10s coming out. Always nice to see. Love me some MAC-10. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not used to, to how that third-person view model looks for people with MAC-10s. Yeah, it's, it looks sideways, doesn't it? Yes, the, the, like it the, the stereotypical drive-by way of holding a weapon. Mm. I, think it, I think it's the MAC-10, which is grossly inaccurate in real life. Ooh, Body and Smiths, this is awkward now. Might want to give uh, the AK to a high-health player, <laughs> Smiths. There goes RPK as well. It's only Taz towards long, though. And they'll just leave Scream to finish things off, but he's also going to get headshot, so... <laughs> but Spro did a good job. Did a lot of damage, for sure. Yeah. Unfortunate to not get more kills out of it, but at this point, it wouldn't, wouldn't really mess up the economy of uh, G2 all that much. And well, as you as you can see, the, the economy of VP themselves isn't that great. Very limited utility, and in many ways, a similar situation as uh, where G2 found themselves after the pistol round in the first uh, in the first go of things. And there, that's when we started to see the the aggression coming out from G2 with the weapons. Just curious to see whether or not Beaker are going to do the same. They didn't have any sort of tendencies to do so, like have any sort of aggressive pushes versus Godsend, uh, barring their eco rounds. So, would be surprised actually if we saw them start running around the map. For now, it's a fairly passive hold. Snacks around the toilets, Taz around graffiti. Three people around the B bomb site from Virtus Pro. Maybe knowing the G2 favor this. Ooh, Taz spotting some heads. They need some rotation. One player's coming in, but what can Bali do in the meantime? T's pushing through the smoke. That's not going to work out. And now it's uh, CT's time to have a nice spray down towards B bomb site. The reload can't get in fast enough, though. Smiths with a lovely headshot there. Here's a player on the support on the low ground. Can he take Taz down, though? Can't do it. Shock's going down at the same time. Focus is probably not after this yet. Taz being a proper hero in that round. The, the one smoke they had on that B bomb site 
lands perfectly to isolate RPK and the second player from G2 coming up short gives Bialy the opportunity to have a 1v1 situation and anyone else who's coming through that smoke for G2 has to eat, well, first off, look towards Bialy, which gives Taz enough time to, to get a couple of easy shots in and at that point you have no idea where to look for G2. A very solid job overall and well, much better by this time around for VP, but... This is a must win for B for VP. There's no money if they lose this round and uh, with G2 on 13 already, that could be a fatal mistake. So far, so good. Taz has spotted it out though. Nice one down from Taz. How many can he get? We know he likes his barbecues. Just the one for him though. Snacks with a very nice angle there. Scream looking for it. The smoke is down and the plant is coming in. There goes Pasha, three versus three. RPK on the flank, but maybe Snacks is in a position to do something about it. Although I'm sure they know he's there from the earlier engagements. RPK just about getting that kill. Last two in CT, Bali and Neo. Smith's on the site, maybe the uh, first engager there. Oh, Scream goes down, that's a great angle through the fence, but how much more can Vertex Pro do here? Jonathan comes in, they see Smith now, but Neo goes down. What can Bali do about it? Not much. Lovely work from Smith, 3K from him in that round. That puts G2 in a very strong position. Indeed it does, and like you mentioned, no money to be found on BP's side as well. And well, they have the option of having a really, really terrible force buy or letting G2 get up to uh, to match point. And that would also leave G uh, VP in a situation where they don't really get the best of buys either. But they're going to opt for pretty much the, the highest probability chance they can have, which is holding on to their, their money for now. There it is. Neo dispatched of nothing but USPs and uh, Virtus Pro are going to be playing against match point in the first map of uh, many for Europe today. Train is coming up next between these two sides. But we'll see if it's coming soon or if Virtus Pro can hang on after this round. And Train should be a should be a really good matchup for for these two teams. Not for now, Pasha. <laughs> Trying to see if you can find a frag to stick with them. Bob, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, G2 doesn't really need more money than they already have. They're not that greedy. Well, here we're gonna see the buy, and again, it's uh, <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. No real utility to speak of, and in a situation like this, it's gonna be extremely hard for them to actually hold on to it for uh, for far into the round. Mag seven on snacks and Bamas and Bialy, and a high tempo coming out from G two. Yeah, they want to finish this one quickly. Neo and Bali over towards B. No third man on B for Virtus Pro on this occasion. So far, so good for the G2 side. That's an open B bomb site. Now we've got rotation coming in from Connector. Seen already as Chox gets taken down through the tunnel. Body and Snacks heading towards Monster. We'll see who gets the flank first. Snacks hiding on the corner of the smoke. And Body may walk in and get flanks immediately by Snacks. That is so bizarre. Snacks spotted though, and he can't get the kill. Team kill coming in from Smiths. And now we have Taz towards the tunnel. He gets the frag, but look how tagged he is. Look how tagged RPK is. Scream might have a lot to do here. Graves coming in, but Scream has perfect timing. And that's Pasha versus 2 of 7 HP, and he won't do it either. 16 to 7, a strong overpass from G2. Definitely, and uh, really liking the... Actually, very fun to see G2 having the aggressive play on the CT side. It's something that they do on a couple of other maps as well. It's always fun to see aggressive CT side plays. Uh, work out and in and, and a, and a different manner than what you normally see because the standard way of playing overpass CT side is that you, you put the aggression on towards the A-bomb side so you have an op picking aggressively towards playground or you have that you know duo tag team pushing up long to see if you can get the first frag here or there which to be fair they did as well but yeah, the fact that they were so adamant about sending body out through monster getting him the, a lot of information just making sure that they can make safe rotations and whatnot for the team was, uh, was really fun to see. Yeah, it was yeah, that was very very entertaining uh, CT side from G2 indeed. Those pushes were really awesome. And I do wonder if they if they will uh, vary depending on their opponent, but they seem to have the jump on versus pro yeah. on that particular half. And and to be fair, it's not not an, an uncommon way of playing the T side. It, the way VP did it as well with having only a sole guy towards that B bomb set to hold off anything. So if they can find the timings or uh, you know look into their opponents to see if there's tendencies that that the guy team A puts left towards B, then, you know, he's going to shy away after X amount of seconds. If they can see, you know, patterns like that with their teams, then this is definitely something they can do versus well, pretty much anyone. 
train is coming up after the break between these two sides. So stay tuned and we'll see if uh, Virtus Pro can get one back.